Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. Thanks so much for joining us. Before we begin, head down below and hit the subscribe button and like the videos. It helps people find us. Right. Leave yeah. me a comment if this is helpful. I read all the comments. I we love do. your comments. We do. We do. Absolutely. So this week we did an entire build, uh, Blossom and Root Wonder video and one day of Build Your Life. Yeah, I think this is the perfect example yeah. of how Blossom and Root just really expands upon these earlier eras, the you know, Build Your Library. Build Your Library covers one day of Permian, Carboniferous, um, and the, Devonian, the, Devonian think, yeah. and all one day. one day. Whereas Blossom and Root is taking an entire week for Carboniferous Carboniferous and Permian. And that is what we were studying this week, the Carboniferous period and the and the Permian period. Two wildly different periods. It was very enjoyable. Carboniferous period was basically when the planet was this giant swamp with super tall trees and the arthropods or big mega bugs ruled mm -hmm. the earth. And then it went into the Permian period where it was kind of dry and it was almost like a desert and there were these proto reptile -y, proto dinosaur creatures uh, walking near. So very wildly different time periods. And so, yeah, it is kind of a challenge to think about studying those all in one day. And so it was really helpful to, you know, spend the week and take our time and mm. do the whole full wonder and actually hit all these time periods because they are super different. And then it ended with the Permian period, the mass extinction, the big, biggest extinction of our time, which opens up for dinosaurs, which is coming up soon. So. I'm, I just have to say you impressed me because... I, <laughs> You all don't know this, but we are recording. Can, can I get that on my phone? Yeah, we are recording this three weeks later hold on, because hold on, we have been hold on. hit can by you, can, the flu in can, our house. Can you, can, you, can you record that? <laughs> you impress me. You, you do. Me. You do. The fact that you remember all this, I just want to give this disclaimer ahead while we're working on this today because we have been down with the flu for yes. three and a half weeks in our household. Yes. Um, and there's been so much coughing that we've not been able to record these videos. So we're getting <laughs> caught up and we're going to be releasing them as quick as we can get Absolutely. them all out. But if there's anything that's like a little off and you're like, wait a minute, you guys, that was, you talked about that last time or no, that wasn't this week. We're trying our best. Um, <laughs> but you impressed me because you remember all of this stuff that we did. And I think that that's a really good example of how, what an impression yes. this has made on you and, and on our daughter, which is totally the point that three weeks later, you still remember, you're like, oh yeah, this was the mega bugs. This is when this happened. And I, I'm kind of like, wow, you know, I can't remember like two weeks ago what I did at work, <laughs> but you remember this stuff. So I think that that's really terrific. This is all I have going on. The parents at home know we live in this. We live this. I just think it's pretty impressive. So I'm giving you the kudos and I'm also giving us a pass in case there's anything we miss. <laughs> Forgive us. It's, we've been so sick. So we're going to start off. Uh, we've been doing a lot of show and tell uh, pages. We'd like to do that. We were using the uh, Life uh, 4 Billion Years First book. 4 Billion Years, we're, which we've talked about in the previous video. We're heading back to our great dinosaur search from Usborne, just to kind of give you a visual of the the key yeah. important points. Cool Vanna for you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the key important points is the first page here is this kind of the rise of the arthropods. The trees took over, massive swamps, super cool kind of way to get around, get your head around it. We, we talked a little bit about the Paleo Bugs books as well as the Mega Bugs books in our previous episodes. Those are very applicable for the for this time period yeah. and the Permian as well. We had to return them to well, the we, library. So otherwise, <laughs> but look back at our Silurian and Devonian video if you want to talk about Mega Bugs. And right. I think the one before that we talked about Paleo Bugs. We exactly. did one on each episode. So Absolutely. if you want to see more and, and look at those yep. books, you can look so, at our previous so videos. So as you can see, this is kind of like the bugs. This is their great time. It was like huge amounts of oxygen in the air. It allowed them to grow to these swell into these enormous sizes if you have a kid that likes bugs to, even if they don't like bugs but they wouldn't mind observing them from a distance this is this is the week for yeah, the carbon really cool. and then if you turn the page we get into the permian period right here which a lot of people will look and say wow that looks like a dinosaur yeah and it's kind of a dinosaur a reptile. Not, not really the dinosaurs come after this period Re you, dinosaurs are reptiles right yeah but okay no, I'm going to wait till next week. We'll, we'll talk about why dinosaurs, Again, they're I not so, this, they're like this. I have such a knowledge gap here, you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you, they, you constantly see them. And right here, right from Dimetrodon, which is a very classic kind of lizard with a huge sail. A lot of people go, oh, that's a dinosaur. And it kind of looks like you would think of what a dinosaur would be, but it's not technically a dinosaur. Um, and you see these kind of these massive reptiles. This is where the reptiles kind of came into their own. But right at the end of the Permian period, mass extinction, largest one in our in our planet's history we will 
talked to some videos about it and it really cool kind of geeked out a little bit on like how did it happen and whatnot but these are the eons videos these we're are talking the eons about, videos which are linked in blossom and root which absolutely. are worth the price of the, the curriculum alone exactly absolutely if, if nothing else <laughs> those videos are terrific so these are the two periods you can kind of see this is kind of like a desert world very dry um, got a little bit into the plate tectonics because the earth is now starting to form into this kind of proto Pangea uh, uh, period so it's a great time to kind of get in the plate tectonics because from this time until now lots of movement lots of ge um, geology a lot of changes in the, in the environment Pangea being kind of this large kind of dry landmass uh, allowed these reptiles to kind of thrive into their own it was a wonderful really cool kind of like sweep between this really wet world to this dry world and again we have the process that we're talking about hundreds of millions of years across these time periods yeah. so really really cool so that was it's a great way to kind of again reiterate hey we're moving through these time periods each one while they may be similar they have their own distinct characteristics and those are the key right. takeaways that we're trying to have our kids um, kind of take away with right. this is that you know Remember the bugs here and then remember the reptiles here and they can kind of associate one to the other. Yeah, absolutely. Remember the different periods. So we're going to talk, we always like to talk about a spine or two. Um, really cool one here is when the whales walked. This is a, this is a spine for Build Your Library. Build your we're library. trying to highlight one spine per show. One of the key things is once we got out of the Permian, the Silurian, and we started to get onto the land, and this is really one of that, like that first massive period of, of growth on land animals and land creatures, you start to have this weird dynamic when the evolution is playing out, is that creatures will come onto land, they will develop, and then some of them will choose to go back into the water, and that's kind of oh, what they're playing on, is when, when the whales walked. And so you, you have this, because at the beginning we were all on the water, and now we're on the land and the water, and we're starting to get these species moving in opposite directions. So you may have uh, reptiles that, that come onto land, and then the reptiles have their time period, and then all of a sudden we get into a new time period, and some of the reptiles decide to go back into the water. Mm -hmm. And that's, we have this play, especially when we get to the dinosaur period, where we're having reptiles move from the land to the ocean, ocean to the land, mammals into the water, mammals out of the water into mm -hmm. the land, and you start to see these um, species and these in these lines of evolution and, and and selection and how they how they adapted and changed. And what's really cool is to see a reptile evolve the same bodily characteristics that the fish in the Silurian period had. And you can draw those two and say, this is a fish, but this one over here is a reptile. But man, oh man, do they got the same thing. They had the same fins, the same same body structure. Really cool. And this book really highlights that. So they yep. just playing with that idea that there's you know this massive evolutionary time period. The species are moving across. And we're starting to get this real complex nature of movement of, of creatures and and different species and different animal types. I think this is going to be used through quite a bit yeah. of the weeks. This is just yeah. the first time that we've actually used this because yep. this is a spine for Build Your Library. It's one of a series of books. Yep. There's um, When Planets Ruled the Planet, When Planets Took Over the Planet, we'll talk about that next, and When um, when We Became Humans. There's, yeah. So there's, uh, there's two other books. And, so overall, and, and, how do you feel about this book? I love it. This is a really cool spine, a, a little bit more of an elevated book. Um, a little bit more complex than say some of the, like maybe the Usborne book or some of the other readers. I like them a lot because they kind of have this playful artistic style that I think is really helpful. If you have a little bit of an older learner, if you're doing this with an older learner, these books are really, really good because they can kind of get, you get the meat. Like How do you feel the adaption was for the first grader? I thought it was okay. I, I had to eat, read sm smaller amounts of it. So you couldn't really sit down and like chunk through 12 or 15 pages okay. like you could with an older reader. It would get a little dry, a little slow, and you'd have to like kind of break it up. I if mean, you... I, again, these are these are such heady concepts for it, a, a you know, seven-year-old to understand. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, you know, just remember that nibbling on these books, even if you don't do them all or all the sections, it's okay. You get a pass, at least from us, to skip a couple sections here and there. If you just didn't get to it, it's okay. But if you're looking for a good spine that starts like pre-Cambrian and it's going to go all the way, I think they have um, mammals in the, in the modern era in here as well. So like 
It's a this is these are two books that you can definitely span the entire. Pre, Seems like pre-history. a good in, a good uh, a good investment uh, for your nonfiction library for your yeah, homeschool. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. So this is for Build Your Library. So let's talk about this one. When plants took over the planet, this is one of our spines we added. Yeah. Yes. So we wanted to go over this with you. We're going to be using this through most of it. Most of it. And it talks about uh, you know the the just the start of plants all the way into some of the species still exist today. Like uh, awesome. horsetails, horsetails was a big yeah. one because we used to have those yeah. on some property and, and, now and, and yeah and this this time it's kind of funny where i was like i recognize those <laughs> yeah the time period we're talking about right now i believe a lot of horsetails uh, a lot of proto ferns um and they're basically pro- the same as they conifers. were then which just, is kind of amazing it's just size is a little different they would have these horsetails would be like tall as like a normal tree like a cedar tree so it's, it's interesting yeah. though but so many of the characteristics being the same yeah and so long ago a lot of the plants that we They're see in these early and... time periods are still on the planet now, which is, I think, super interesting. But if you can think about it, again, you can tell them as, as we move through these time periods and we have these mass extinctions, the plants are very robust. They're going to survive and, and, and exist. And we saw that even with kind of some of the protobacteria um, in the early Cambrian, uh, when we were in pre-Cambrian time frame, um, looking at fossilized uh, structures that were created by cyanobacteria, I think it, it was the term. Um, we find these that are like 4 billion years ago. And this is one of the ways that we know because of these fossilized structures, the reason why we know that those are what they are is because we have them today. Like you can go off the coast of Australia and find those same structures and you can compare them and they look exactly the same. It's really interesting. So they've been there for so long. Again, drawing those threads through the time, I think is a really cool um, wrinkle that you'll want to do when you're doing this. I'm starting to like... You know, we're like four or five weeks into it. I'm starting yeah. to see like, okay, how do I draw this information through through well, it's cool. and the through line? You can read about when ferns, yeah. you know, came yeah. into existence and then we can go out into if, the forest and we if, can see ferns. If you guys are, I think is neat. If you guys are a big gardening family, kind of a, a an outdoorsy family, if you like to look at plants and trees and whatnot, this is a really good book. Right. It can be... Because it's plants, it's not as like... It's not as fun as animals. It's not as fun as animals. For the younger set. But yeah. if you're outdoorsy, I think this is really cool because of how many plants you can find in nature today that, we're still that there. are still there in some, some capacity. Some capacity, absolutely. Uh, so this is really good. And, yep. and again, I think just another great uh, addition to your nonfiction library exactly. that you know you can keep. I, I mean, it's a wonderful I could reference. see yeah. you know, referencing back to this for a long, long time. Exactly, exactly. So. Just remember, Ellie Sadler, when she's driving down the Jurassic Park, she's like, you know, looking at, this is this species has been extinct for right. 100 million years, right? Plants are just as important as the animals yeah. as well. Because, I think it's neat. And, and, and if you're having trouble, uh, you know, kind of keying in on the plants, start to use them as like ideas of food. Like, okay, a lot of these animals, ha- a lot of these animals were not just all meat eaters. A lot of them were herbivores. And they had to eat something. And so it's a great way to kind of bring in is like, this is the food for the animals that we're talking about. I think this is interesting because so much of, you know, prehistory, again, I have big knowledge gaps, but the, the bit that I remember is all animal based. Yeah. And so it is interesting to get this perspective. And this is the only book that I have seen yeah, that really plants. covers plants in this way. Yeah. So if you want some coverage, I don't think you're going to get it in basically any other book. This is a good one to pick up. We have touched a number of the prehistory books and almost no no discussion on plants other than yeah. like very important plant oriented moments like oh trees or oh you know uh, conifers or whatever it is just mild stuff this is a complete book that's devoted to it i i would i would say this is super important yeah i think yep. it's a really good addition so. so next thing i want to talk about is a little bit of like i would say it's like a graphic novel chapter book yes yeah, so this is the earth before us this is yeah. by i think it's by abby howard and yeah. this one is ocean renegades so it starts in so, Modern times. Silurian, doesn't it? You no, know, it actually, I think she goes all the way to the, to the Cambrian, uh, pre-Cambrian time. Is, is it pre-Cambrian? Yeah. Too? Okay. Yeah. So this is, it's a graphic novel and it, it's a little bit on a, a, like a, a higher level than a magic school bus, but similar type concept yeah. where a teacher it's transports a, a kid through time and they, they see all these different periods. Yeah. This is definitely. It has a, kind of a formula where the teacher says, here's this creature and these are the cool things about them and then the next page will be like here's another creature and the cool things about them so there's like kind of a flow to it so you don't have to sit there and think about okay we gotta you know we're reading a chapter book it's gonna take us a whole week it's it's 140 pages long and i need to get 30 pages a day in order to finish it don't think of it in this in that way 
Um, basically, every section had every section of this book. I think it, it breaks into a different time period. So you'll talk about the Carboniferous. We'll talk about the Permian. We'll talk about the Silurian and everything. So it's a really good book to kind of take you from the Precambrian to basically the Permian period, maybe right before the dinosaurs. And every section you could read maybe 15, 20 pages. Yeah. And take a couple days to do it and really enjoy it. It's a, it's a, you know, this is not something to binge read. No, it's not. It's, it's actually, for a graphic novel, it's quite dense. It is. Um, and our daughter did enjoy it because of the visual nature of it. Mm -hmm. But it has a lot of information. It's really, it, it, It's really dense with yeah. information. So that's why nibbling, I think, on this book would be a, a good way to, to, to right. consume it in your curriculum. And I, and I think, too, if you have a student who likes to read graphic novels or likes to look yeah. through graphic novels, we caught our daughter looking at this quite a bit and then asking questions. And I think it's definitely a book that you can pop through. So if you're kids looking through this and you know finds a page of something interesting you yeah. can read about just that without having to read the entire book yep. so I, I mean I think great, this is great visual for a lot of times when we're looking to do art projects or we're looking to do some type of study if you're doing the timeline you need to find some animals as yeah. references and this book was really good. Yeah, I think this is definitely a get from the library. I wouldn't buy yeah. this book necessarily yeah. because I think that it could be could just be way above your learner's level and yeah. too dense without enough. There's not a whole lot of story here. No. This is it's mostly really purely informational. Purely informational with cool pictures, and mm -hmm. they try to make it like an adventure as she takes them through time. But yeah. it's more information than story. So definitely get it from the library. I see a lot to like about it, yep. but I just don't think I would buy it. Absolutely. Yep. I agree. I agree. Next one is we're going to talk about a recommendation, I think, from us. The, yeah. the Street Beneath My Feet. This is a book that I think you can introduce. It's not necessarily just for this time period. I think it's a book that you could slot into any one of these. Yeah, it gets, it gets wild. Whoa. I, yeah, it, it gets just wild. keeps going. It keeps going. It's like the ultimate centerfold book. Um, Boy, I'm basically, not expecting that. Um, if you are trying to teach about Earth, and its various layers. We're talking about from the crust in the atmosphere, down to the crust, down to the mantle, to the core, and everything in between, all the various slices, oil, uh, fossils, underwater aquifers, the subway system, whatever. Just talking about the world beneath your feet and going all the way through to the core and then all the way out to the other side. Well, and, and, and it covers the use, things, that, the fossils and exactly. things. So, I mean, it you goes can with use the levels. This and, any period from like, I, I don't think it's very specific. So if, it, if at any time, maybe like early in, in the curriculum, if you want to slot in the idea of, okay, when we are digging for fossils and when we are looking for these creatures, we're having to dig down. And so what is beneath our feet? And there were some, some elements at the beginning where they talked about fossils, talked about digging, talked about finding everything in layers. This might be a very good book at the beginning but I think we finally, we've had it for a couple of weeks and we finally read it like a couple of weeks, like this last week or so. And it was really enjoyable. It was a really quick right. read. It was, a, and then as you can see, as it opens up, it's very like dynamic. The kid's like, oh my gosh, you could just like, what is in this this book? And you can flip the pages back and forth. It could be cool to like lay it out on the floor. It's, it's a book and that then, takes you on And then the you journey. could just like yeah. go down, you know, sit on one side of it, your learner yeah. on the other side, kind of just keep moving down. down. Yeah. I think it's a really neat book. Um, yeah. And this might be good too if you're doing like a geology study as yeah. well because it definitely does talk about the layers of Earth. Yeah. So this is a cool one. Um, I don't know that it has enough replay value to buy it, but yeah. I definitely get it from your library. Definitely get it for a library. A really cool book, especially if you're trying to, if, you're, if your learner is lacking that interest in the fossils, this might be a way to kind of spurn that because it is so dynamic in the way you can just unfurl the whole book and just look at all the various layers. I think it's just very dynamic and fun. Yeah, very cool. So Absolutely. street beneath my feet. Absolutely. So from there, from we did a little, we had a chapter book. Yeah, so there's only one chapter book between this Boston and Root and Build Your Library. Build Your Library has Maru of the Winter Caves. It's at the very end when you're talking about early man. And so I was like, ah, you know, we like a good chapter book. So I wanted to add some other things and this was just for fun. Professor Hardwick and his nephew Yes, a Harry. journey to the center of the earth, and Jules the, Verne. And, 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 the, and the stoic, quiet, non-talking hero, uh, hero of the book, Hans. So, <laughs> Not um, the bad Hans from, from Frozen, the good Hans. From... So this is the Great Illustrated <laughs> Classics version. If you haven't done any Great yeah. Illustrated Classics, they're great. They've got you know, simple black and white drawings on every spread, which is really nice. They're a quick read, it's large font. Um, our kids really enjoy them. Even our three-year-old will sit while we read these. Um, and it, we're actually reading through Christmas Carol right now and they're really loving it. So uh, these are great. This has no like 
real bearing exactly on this time period, but I know that there's, you know, giant plants and giant bugs and there's a bit of dinosaurs Tunnels in it. And, and I thought it would be fun. Yeah, it's so. just, it's a fun... A, the, so the way we did this this week is that we were doing some art, we were doing some Lego play, and I would just like, because, you know, I'm a... I'm a slave to the steps. Um, I just pace around the kitchen uh, uh, table while the girls were, were doing their activities. Yeah. And I'd just be reading the book and showing them the pages. And treating it more like an audio book. So they're doing another activity and I was just reading to them. It was a great little thing. Two hours of reading, I think, and we finished it. It wasn't yeah. very long at all. Kind of a fun, playful uh, uh, book. And it goes well when you pair it with... Journey to the Center of the Earth. So this is the one with Brendan Fraser from 2006. Uh, making that up. Anyway, whatever year it was. Uh, this is the one with Brendan Fraser, and it is not a... 2008. It is, oh, 2008. I was close. Um, it's not exactly the book. It's somebody that comes afterwards and discovers that the, the Vernians, the people that think that Jules Verne... I don't know if that's a real thing. The people that believed in Jules Verne's stories, um, that they find there really was this underground world. It got really terrible tomato ratings if you're like a Rotten Tomatoes uh, family. My kids loved it. They thought it was awesome. Yeah. I watched it when my, parent were, my parents were visiting for a yep. couple of days, and we all watched it together. Everybody enjoyed it. The kids got a lot out of it. They thought it paired really well with the book. So yep. I, just for fun. This is what we did, you know, if you wanted to do this when you even started Dinosaurs. If you're looking for an excuse to read um, Center to the Earth, Journey to the Center of the Earth, I think, it's, I think it's fun. This was a good time. It was a good time because it, at the end it kind of gets in a little bit of a dinosaur thing. So you yeah, can kind of like purely tease yourself what's coming up next week and all that stuff. So it was a, it was a good... I, and I, love I didn't watch the movie. I, I didn't watch the movie, but I read the book. You know what? It was cheesy and good. You know, it, 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 not highbrow entertainment, yeah. but it was good. Uh, and I think that... You know, I like putting in these great illustrated classics wherever we can because mm -hmm. it just gives our kids, you know, even if they decide to never as, you know, adults or older older students read the actual original text, they'll have a good idea of these, you know, famous classic works of literature yeah. and say, oh, yeah, That's I know the, about that. I and that. I think it's great for exposure for them to get this. Otherwise, we'd have to wait until they're you know in high school or something or, or junior high to read some of these books yeah. and by then they might not be interested they might not get into it this may be this may be their only exposure i've never even read a journey to the center of the earth myself so we have these great illustrated classics yeah. whenever we go thrifting at you know valley village or goodwill or whatever we always pick these ones up white red text yes it's really easy to see the spines Super they're easy usually all hardcover <laughs> I think that they're a good investment. Someday we will have this. We have a pretty decent collection now, but we'll have a big collection we can give away to another homeschool family. Yep. Um, so I think that they're valuable. So let's so, talk art. Then, well, then, well, before we went on to the Eons videos, one of the big things oh, about yeah. the end of this period, which I think is really cool, is the idea of the mass extinction at the Permian. I mean, to think about we had this three or 400 million years of, of life that, that came and some of it went and came back again and... And there's all these different creatures that thrived. I mean, we're talking, you know, our old friends, Hallucigenia and our little worms, all the way up to Dimetrodon, you know, massive 30 foot, you know, mm -hmm. reptile rocking around and eating. And it was such a, it, that is such an amazing story that we've covered. And it very well could have ended at the end of the Permian. And it's really mm -hmm. interesting to know that how tenuous that, that, that whole story that we just covered could have ended, but it didn't. And it, it held on, and from there we went on to dinosaurs, which we'll start covering next week. But to talk about that extinction event, I think was a, a, a pretty cool thing. In the eons of videos, they talked about it and kind of ideas on what they thought it might have been with volcanoes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't the asteroid strike? It was just like a bunch of bad stuff happened, and it was really interesting to see how these complex ecosystems just collapsed. And you know, has you know. Um, really interesting information for today and you know our impact on the earth and everything so great way to kind of draw that forward so we have these two anchors right now something that we can talk about now and something that happened back then and, and see see what those how those affected those creatures so it's really really interesting eons video talked a lot about that from there we did some crafts so what we found, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but in general, the crafts that we've found in Blossom and Root, some of them tended to be a little bit involved for our first grader. So we've gone back to paper crafts, and you made this, uh, right, some sort of a mega bug. We took some... Mega, mega Nura. Now, we had two of these, but my the art teacher took the other one because it was show and tell, and she's like, this is amazing. 
I'm taking it. Right. So it's construction paper and uh, skewers from the kitchen that we cut the sharp parts off, and then some uh, <laughs> tissue paper from the dollar store that we had around in our Christmas box. And we made these. Our daughters loved it. And some. They were flying around. And some uh, some some scotch tape. So super easy. I think that this is just a good example of how you know uh, there are. There are different art projects in the curriculum, and yep. a lot of Blossom and Root Weeks just say sculpt something type thing. <laughs> and you know, for our kids being young, paper crafts just tend to go over really well with them. They're easy to do. Yeah. Um, they're easy for them to color on, and so it's right in their wheelhouse. So for your younger kids, feel free to you know deviate from the arts and crafts that's listed and make something that your kids are really into. Our kids are super into Mega Bugs. Hence, this little guy that we made, uh, that you mega, made. Mega neuro. I, 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 love, I love when you do, and he's got the, the feet. The, the, the legs. <laughs> the legs well, that come down. The funny thing is, it was actually that big. Oh, yeah, but like we didn't have, the skewers weren't long enough. The skewers were long enough. I tried to. <laughs> so, so, just an, an gonna, example gonna, of the kind gonna, of thing we did. They're going to and... skewer us on, on the authenticity. Mm, yeah, so, you know, this is kind of fun. It, you know, definitely... Each week we'll show you the different types of crafts and things that we did with our kids that we felt were a little bit more age appropriate um, for a first grader and a tag along three year old. Yep. So hopefully this was helpful and yep. this review of the Carboniferous and Permian We're going period to dinosaurs. Was good. The the Mesozoic area, Triassic, right. Jurassic, yes. Cretaceous. We're it's coming. a dinosaur overview next week. So stay tuned, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.